All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, Lag Demon Programming, and this is the uh, compiler design course. Um, I am going to uh, file, open folder, let's move over to here, and we'll be all set <clears throat> to get going again on our, uh, on our little miniature compiler. So what we're going to do today is we're going to clean up a couple of things and make this work a little bit better. <clears throat> And then uh, in the next video, uh, we're going to uh, and we're going to add a few things to it. In the next video, we're going to change the way it operates a little bit. So we'll see how things go, how much I can get done in this video. And, uh, and yeah, uh, let's get going. So the first thing I want to talk about is the way we're interpreting numbers here. There's a, there's a little bit of a problem. Let me, uh, let me bring up the other terminal. And let's get out of this area and get into the compiler design tutorial build okay let's make sure it builds yeah everything's okay there so if we go main okay so we were doing this before we were saying three plus two okay that's good it says the answer is five but if we go three if we go three plus two we get a parse error uh, we'll try that again without hitting backspace. 3 plus 2, we get a parse error. So why is that? Well, I will explain that right now. The reason is, is we're, we're interpreting this plus or minus along with our numerical values. And uh, we really don't want to do that. I did that kind of as an example or an ex, you know, to show that we could do that. But it kind of messes up the way the compiler works because if it's right next to the number it's going to interpret the plus as part of the number instead of a, a symbol that it needs so it's going to see two numbers back to back with no plus symbol in between and, and that's going to be a parse error so what I'm going to do is take that plus and minus out of those and we'll leave these simple ones for now we're going to make a better floating point number and uh, and all that shortly let's go over to our port parser now and we want our expressions to possibly be positive or negative so it's really easy because we already have a, uh, a T plus symbol so all we're gonna do is go in here and go well if it's T underscore plus followed by an expression we're gonna say that dollar sign dollar sign equals and dollar sign two so remember that the first position is dollar sign one the second position is dollar sign two well that's easy that just gets rid of that extra plus symbol uh and uh if there's nothing before it if it doesn't match these others and you notice i'm putting this towards the bottom so it's going to see these first if it's not going to put the plus together with the expression here uh, when it finds it between expressions, only when it, it's at the beginning of an expression. So if we go T minus expression, we need to have that dollar sign, dollar sign, that placeholder, which is the expression, equals a minus dollar sign 2. And now, if we go into uh, our build, uh, oh, actually, I want to do it in this one here we do a make everything should be fine do source main <clears throat> now if we go three plus two like this the answer is five or if we go three space plus two the answer is still five if we go three minus plus two the answer is one if we go three minus minus two it picked it up as five minus minus two would be addition <clears throat> so it's doing the math correctly now and it doesn't care about the white space we can go three minus minus two and we'll get five because that's the same thing parser doesn't care whether there's white space between it says a three it sees a minus it produces it as a minus it sees another minus produces it as a minus and so forth and this goes into the interpreter so let's think about this three minus minus two and how it gets parsed inside of our expression well it sees three and it says okay well that's a, a float which is an expression okay so it's got an expression on the stack then it sees a minus 
and it says okay we're in the minus expression but then it sees that it's got another minus and it says minus okay just a minus by itself and an expression is also an expression so it combines these two then it does the minus up here and ultimately performs the the subtraction because this minus turned it into a negative number when it ran this part of it here so that's the way that works okay so that's kind of squared away and our our system is working a little bit better <clears throat> now <clears throat> The next thing I want to do is I'm thinking that what we want to do is turn this into like a command line parser um, so that we can maybe build a game around it <clears throat> where, <clears throat> excuse me, where the uh, whatever we type in <clears throat> gets parsed by the command line. Well, we could have this thing produce prompts and all that, but it gets a little bit weird and it behaves a little bit funny. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to change modify this function and again I want to you know glance at my notes just make sure here that I know what I'm talking about all right so <clears throat> we're going to go back to using our our main.cpp here uh, instead of this one that we put in the parser we're going to change this to uh, to a function that allow us to parse an incoming string Right now, uh, I guess I should back up and explain this one. We just call YY parse like this. It's attaching to what's called standard in, which is why it's expecting something from for us to type something in. Uh, we can attach this to a to a file that we've opened, uh, in which case it will read that, start reading that file and passing it to YYLex and all that. Uh, or we can attach it to a string. We're going to start by attaching it to a string that comes into this function, but we're not going to call it main. What we're going to what we're going to change the name of this uh, here very shortly, <clears throat> and and the way the parameters come in. But there's some things that we need to uh, set up and change before we do that. This is all very my other. Uh, thing is very weirdly colored and I just realized it's because on my other screen I've got Windows and I'm I'm looking at the prep code that I did in Windows <laughs> instead of in Linux so it's coloration here is a little bit different and that was throwing me off <laughs> that's why the pause okay so <clears throat> but also we want to think about this expression uh, so right now uh, we've only got one kind of expression and that kind of expression is just a float val. That's all it does is, is floating point numbers. Even if we enter what would be an integer, see we've included integer up here uh, and we really don't want that. <clears throat> we want two separate ones. So we're going to refactor this just a little bit here and we're going to do that by create by changing this, changing what this is called. First of all, we're going to call this one here. We're going to take out this int from here. And we're going to change this. We're going to call this a float expression, and we're going to change all of the expressions in this to float expression. And hopefully, I won't mess this up doing this paste. So we're just going to swap all these out for float expression. Make sure I hit the right ones, and then I want to line these up a little bit better here and more nicely. There we go. So now we've got float and float expression. And up here where we've got float val in this and int val, uh, we just uh, want to change this here also to float expression because now we're going to create an int expression down here, which will be numbered differently. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this uh, because it's absolutely identical, except that we're going to change this to int and we're going to go through here and we're going to change all these float expressions in this one to int expression so that we have two of them one for floats and one for ints and I'm going to show you how we're going to be able to sort of combine them but in a very mathematically correct way so that we don't end up with <coughs> the loss of I don't know what happened there, but I wanted this. I 
there okay and this is all in expression now we've got to come up here and create that type so it's going to be the same as this one except it's going to be our int val in here and it's going to be our int expression here okay that's good now we've got two types of expressions a float expression in expression well an in expression can never be a float expression <clears throat> the reason is that would cause loss of information we would uh <clears throat> which is another reason i put it below it uh an int expression if if you turned a float into an int you would lose the information now there's ways of doing that we can create functions that are methods that that truncate it on purpose if that's what you've told it to do in the code <clears throat> But we don't want to just arbitrarily translate a float into an int within our compiler. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and say that a float expression can also be an int expression. Oops, we need that or. We need that uh, separator. <clears throat> this basically says the same thing as or. It says it can be any of these things, any one of these things. And we're just going to say that dollar sign dollar sign equals now I want to make sure that I cast it to double and that's going to be that dollar sign one and semicolon so what this is going to do is say well if we've got an int expression uh, combining in a certain way with a float expression then it'll cast the int expression to a float expression but it will never cast a float expression down to an int expression so we won't put float expression in here and I'll show you how this happens and, and what this does when we evaluate these uh, instructions now there is one problem we have expression up here <clears throat> and it's uh, expression it, while expression doesn't exist anymore this has to be either a uh, float expression so we have to change this to oh sorry we have to change this to uh, float expression or a line can be an int expression followed by a t no line we'll do this and then we will separate these so we can see what they are by saying the uh, float answer is and the int answer is <clears throat> all right now we'll go back to here and this should work oh I should stop the program Let's do a make and see if we get errors. We got an error. Uh, so let's see what this error says here. Uh, dollar sign one of line has no declared type. And a line. All right, let me double check my notes. Actually, I think it's something else causing that error. Let me go back to this. Uh, I think the problem is further down. No such errors. Parser.cpp. Oh, now it didn't find the parser because it didn't generate it. Okay, warning. Dollar sign one of line has no declared type. Symbol int x expt. What did I do? Int expression. Where's exp? Where am I? Oh, there it is. Int expression. That's the problem. All right, let's go back here. Let's try to make this again. There, it built. Okay, so dot sign source main. We run it now. If we go three plus two, uh, we get a parse error. Why are we getting a parse error there? Um, int expression. Oh, because I put float here. This needs to be int. Um, float and int are our types. Let's try that again. Make dot slant source main three plus two 
Okay, the answer is 5. If we go 3.1 plus 2, it came out of float. Good. So if the, the float expression appears first and we add 2, it says, okay, well, we're in a float expression and we're adding 2. That's an integer expression. We're okay. We can do something like 3.2 plus and have a complete, oops, plus and have a complete integer expression over here, uh, 3 times 5. So in parentheses, that's a, an integer expression and we're adding it to 3.2 and we get 18.2 which is correct it's 15 plus 3.2 but if we come in here and go 2 plus 3.5 we're going to get a parse error and I'm going to show you in a minute how to make it so it doesn't break out of this when we get a parse error uh, 2 plus 3.5 is not legitimate because we're in an int expression here and we're trying to add to it a float expression and that's not one of our legal rules we can't turn that float as I said into an integer and so it will cast it as long as it knows that we're in a float expression and it gets an integer that's okay it'll use integers with floats but if we're in a in an integer expression it's not going to let you put a float into it and that's mathematically correct because it would lose information it would truncate this so it would become three uh, which is incorrect. <clears throat> All right. And we're broken out of it. Good. So that takes care of that. We now have two kinds of expressions, float expressions and integer expressions. Uh, now what I want to do is think in terms of, uh, of getting this thing. Uh, well, first of all, I want a better floating point number. Uh, we're, we're, we've got a double precision. We're using, oh, we're using float here. You know what? I'm going to change that to double. Uh, we cast it to a double here, uh, so this should be a double here, and over in the Lexer, when we parse that float, this should actually parse to a double. Okay, so that part's taken care of. Now, what I'm going to talk about is creating, uh, creating symbols for ours. So down in here, in our irregular expressions, uh, these can get quite lengthy and so we really want to put them up here in a symbol and I'll show you how to do that right now we're gonna do this really simple we're just gonna call this a float and don't worry this does not conflict in any way with this float because these are really in two different spaces uh, this exists or lives in the space of the lexical analyzer and this lives in the space of C C++ in this case in the in the sense of our programming language so this stuff is being parsed by the lexer and won't matter what uh, or rather it's being parsed by flex not by C++ so it won't interfere between these two so uh, we'll call a float and I, maybe I should change that to double or something but we'll just call it float we're gonna, only going to deal with one kind of floating point number we'll call it float internally it'll be a double precision floating point number so we have this regular expression for a float which is fairly simple um, and if we put it next to float here we can actually just replace this with two of these curly braces and put in there float okay and what that'll do is say that whatever we do up here will get put into here to run this rule so that keeps these short and allows us to write more complex kinds of rules here. So we have the, the regular expression that says, well, it can start with any number of digits, 0 to 9, followed by a decimal point, followed by any number of zero, uh, digits, 0 to 9, but it has to be one in both cases there has to be at least one digit here and one digit here that's what the plus means it means one or more must be present but now what we want to do is create oh and something we probably should do just so you don't in case somebody puts multiple dots in by mistake as we should excuse me we should restrict this and we're going to do it right after the dot with uh this double curly braces in fact, let me uh, zoom in a little bit a few times here, probably so you can see this a little bit better. These curly braces, if we put a 1 in here, it means there can only be one dot. 
it won't if there's more than one dot in between two numbers it won't parse it as a number uh, and and we'll get a uh, it won't uh, or rather the the lexer will not grab it or match it as a number okay now what I'm going to do is uh, create a little group with parentheses at the end here <clears throat> that's ultimately become, going to become an optional group with a question mark after it. And the question mark means there can be one or more, one or none of what's in this group, but there can't be any more. It can be there can be one of that entire group or none. It's optional. And what we're going to say is it can have an e or a capital e, a lowercase e or a capital e. Um, and uh, there would be if it's got this group uh, this isn't optional there has to be at least one of those and then there has to be uh, we could have a plus or a minus and that's optional because it'll default to uh, to plus if there's nothing there and then it has to have 0 to 9 and we'll put a plus by that one or more digits now what does this say well this encodes the concept that we can have an exponent so we can say 1.3 e to the 12th or e12 which means it's 1.3 times 10 raised to the 12th power which is a really big number and I'll show you that this does in fact parse these and we can do math on them. So that's that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take this integer value out of here and I'm going to come up here and go call it int. And I'm just going to put that there. And I'm going to come down here. <clears throat> and I'm going to call this int. And we could do this with all of these. Uh, and I'm going to change this identifier a little bit. We're going to use this later. And I'm going to call this, oops, excuse me. I'm going to call this ident. <clears throat> I'm going to go ident and this. And let's line these up so they look a little nicer and a little easier to read. We'll just tab them out a little bit. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as there's some white space there. Okay. So now we have our float being parsed a little bit better or being, being lexically analyzed a little bit better. This is a pattern match, really not a parsing. So let's go here and build it and see if it builds with those changes. And it does. And now if we run it, we can still say 3.2 times 2. Okay, 6.4. But we can say something like 4.5 E22 times 22e12 and that'll be 22 plus 12 32 uh, 34 it should somewhere be around the 34 range and we got a parse error uh, 4.5e22 times 22e12 that should be okay E or E, there has to be one of those. Plus or minus is optional. Zero to nine, and this whole thing is optional. So let me do something simpler. Let me run it again, and well, if we type in three, it's just three. If we go three E seven, oh, three, sorry, 3.0 E seven. float answer is 3e07. Okay, so what might have happened is we might have gotten some kind of an overflow. So if we go 4.5e6 times 2e3. 2.0e3. Oh, I know what I did wrong. 22e12 isn't valid. You got to have a decimal point in there. Maybe we'll fix that because it should be recognized it as a floating point number. There it is, 9. 6 plus 3 is 9, so it's in the proper range. It's doing the math correctly. So let's fix this so that with floats, uh, it can 
have either this or this. Hmm. I'll have to get back to that. Right now, we just uh, we have to put a decimal point uh, for it to be a, a decimal point and at least one digit for it to be a floating point number. We might fix that a little bit better. It makes it a little more complicated, so we'll keep it simple for now. Hopefully, this is understandable. Uh, it has to start with uh, zero to nine, uh, at least one digit. It has to have a decimal point. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Oh, because I dragged it. Uh, it has to have a decimal point at least one and it has to have at least one digit zero to nine and then it has this whole optional group that can be the exponent of an e a plus or a minus and a digit uh, and then set of numbers and some integer value uh, for the exponent so all right that's it for this video in the next video we'll start looking at how we can set up a command line parser so and start building this into uh, some kind of game perhaps uh, a dungeon crawl or something. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, uh, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.